So this is the new Koros heart rate monitor. And this should be a very efficient review because this is a very simple product. So I'm gonna basically tell you about the product in like one and a half minutes. And then I'm gonna tell you about the accuracy in the other like two or three minutes. So all you need to know about this product. And of course you probably need to know what's in the box, which is, this is the box right here. Pretty straightforward box. You can see a picture I took when I unboxed it on the screen right there. Inside, it's pretty basic. You got the charging cable. It's a magnetic charging cable that attaches to the Koros HR monitor. Uh, there's no like other special name, by the way. It's literally called the Koros heart rate monitor or the Koros HR monitor if you want to officially abbreviate the heart rate for HR. Uh, now, from there, you just go ahead and snap it on and then you can plug it in to charge it. To put it on, you can adjust it. So there's this little Velcro piece right here allows you to move it in and out. Uh, and you can also adjust this piece right there to make it bigger or smaller. Both myself as well as my wife have been wearing it. Uh, no problems going back and forth adjusting it. Now, once you go ahead and put it on your arm, what it'll do, you're gonna put it on your arm, generally around here is kind of the ideal placement there. Uh, and you'll see that little white light popped on. Uh, there you go, that tells you that's turned on. Uh, and it uses a sensor, so if I move this down here and flip this over, you can see the green light's briefly there. Uh, and it uses a skin detection sensor when it is on your arm or any other, any part of your body really. Um, it'll go ahead and automatically turn on, and then when you take it off, it'll automatically turn off. Uh, very, very simple, you can see, boom, it's off. It's like two seconds. I've been keeping it in my backpack and no problems with the turning on and off, uh, because that obviously would impact the battery. The battery's claimed at 38 hours, uh, and in my like battery burn testing, that seems about accurate. The one caveat though is that if you do anything before you work out or after your workout, you gotta like add that into your time. So for example, if after you work out, you just go straight to a coffee shop with friends after a ride, wherever the case is, then you're probably still wearing this and it's still burning battery. Certainly you could take this off and put it in your pocket, but I promise you, as one who has done that many, many times, you will lose it. Uh, not this one, I've lost other ones because it's just really easy to fall out. So just keep it on you and, and take the battery hit. But the reason why I mentioned that is that, that basically puts it in the same exact battery ballpark as their competitors. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Now the band material is made out of a polyester fiber, nylon, and spandex, according to Koros. It's got a waterproofing rating of three ATM, or basically 30 meters. Uh, if you find yourself down with this 30 meters deep, you probably have other problems. Uh, it's totally fine for swimming, of course, but it doesn't have any swimming mode. Uh, so the core thing to understand about this is this just broadcasts your heart rate nothing else. There's no saving of your workout files inside of this. Uh, Coro says it does have memory and they are looking at adding some sort of recording option down the road, uh, but that's not here today and they wouldn't commit to any timelines or commit to if that feature is actually ever going to happen. So uh, for now, it's just broadcasting heart rate, where something like the uh, Polar Verity Sense or Polar OH1 Plus does have that storage on board, does have a swimming mode, etc. that allows you to go ahead and get all your workouts onto this. Weight-wise, by the way, this is 19 grams. This is also 19 grams. It's very, very lightweight. Uh, the nice thing is it doesn't flip over, so I've worn it now for uh, inside and outside workouts and no problems with like in clothing and flipping over, something like that, like some of the older Polar sensors. Uh, the newer Verity sense doesn't have that, but the Polar OH1 and the OH1 Plus did kind of sometimes flip over. Uh, no problems here with that. Also, no problems with slippage or anything else weird. Like this is, I'm happy with the strap. Good job on the strap. So when it comes to using it, you need to use it with something else, of course, uh, because of the fact that it doesn't have any storage on it. Uh, so the idea here being that you would use this with a watch, perhaps, um, or you might use it with an app, something like uh, Peloton or Zwift or Trainer Road, whatever the case may be. Uh, I've used it now with Zwift, with Trainer Road, uh, with a bunch of different watches, Koros as well as Garmin watches, uh, a bunch of bike computers, a uh, Wahoo as well as Garmin. No problems across the board with compatibility. It does only broadcast though on Bluetooth Smart. It does not broadcast on Amp Plus, but it does support three concurrent Bluetooth Smart channels, which I think is fine. Like in 2023, I don't think that's a deal breaker. Would I like to see Amp Plus just for like legacy devices and things like that? Of course. Is it a deal breaker? Not in this day and age. Having three concurrent Bluetooth is more than enough. Okay, so now I've told you all there is to know about this. We don't need to draw this out any longer. It's a strap, you put it on, it, it broadcasts your heart rate. Uh, so the next important thing is, does it do that accurately? Uh, and for that, we're gonna look at the data, which I've got in my handy dandy laptop. Uh, and you can see all these data sets, by the way, if you want to, on my written review, it's linked down below there. You can dive into them. And I'm gonna add more data sets to that written review over the next couple of days uh, and weeks and so on as I continue to use it for other sort of testing. So let's look at this very first data set here. Uh, this is an indoor trainer workout with a bunch of intervals in it. Uh, and you can see here, it's, it's like spot on. I I have no complaints on this. On this first interval workout, 
Good job. Well done. There's no reason to like analyze that further. Uh, the sensor that was behind that yellow at the bottom there that you see uh, is the Whoop 4.0 band that's up here. Uh, and that's just the whoop band. That's the it's whoop doing whoop, right? That's just what it does. Um, the next workout here is an outdoor ride I did about 90 minutes or so. Uh, and you can see there's like two colors that don't match the rest of them. Uh, those two colors are not the Coros band. So that is good. Uh, the first color is the green there. That's a 400 955 uh, on my wrist optical heart rate. Again, outside, super windy conditions. So you're holding on tight, which is one of the more challenging things for optical sensors to do, uh, to be on your bike and holding on your handlebars tight. Uh, and you can see at the very beginning, in there it struggles and then you see above that there's that teal um, bluish line uh, that is the Coros Apex 2 Pro uh, and that also struggled and that then struggled a whole bunch over the course of the workout mostly uh, in that second half there we see that big dip below that uh, but again the Coros band itself was spot on it's matching all the other units there including the chest strap the Verity Sense even the Whoop got it right like look at that um, so all that is there and all that's good then we all go on down here to a run. So you can see the first part here is steady state, and then there's five really hard intensity sprints, and then more steady state. Uh, and overall, like if you looked at the intervals, you'd be like, yeah, the, the Coros uh, HR sensor in purple there is pretty much on. The very last interval, it kind of, you know, tumbles a little bit. Uh, but you need to then zoom in and look at what happens during the steady state portion. And you'll notice that the HR sensor is like wobbling up and down about 10 beats per minute. Like it's above, then it's below, then it's above. And this is super steady state on super flat pancake asphalt ground. It is super, like, this is really well executed stability. Uh, and this is... This is not very stable, and I don't know why. Uh, and that's a tricky thing to solve. I've seen that on other optical heart rate sensors in the past, uh, and rarely do companies manage to solve that long term, uh, including Polar. They've not on their this sensor, but on some of their watch sensors, uh, they've had that, and it's never really been solved. So hopefully, Coros can solve this here because that is certainly a problem uh, to have that pop up in steady state workouts uh, that shouldn't be happening there. So here's another run. This is intervals from this morning. Uh, in this case, on the steady state side you can see it does fairly well. That orangish yellow color at the bottom there, that is the Apex 2 Pro properly crapping the bed. Uh, it's optical heart rate sensor. Uh, so that's like a really good ad if I was Coros as to why I would buy this sensor. Not such a good ad for why I would use the optical sensor in this watch, but hey, one problem at a time. Uh, and then up at the top there, the purple is the Phoenix uh, 7S Pro. Um, struggled a little bit towards some of those intervals, but the heart rate sensor from Chorus was good, the chest strap was good, the polar very sense was good. Life between those three was good, so I don't really have any problems on that one. Uh, but that's just kind of a, an initial look at the data here. I'll be doing more data and adding it to that written review if you want to dig into that over time uh, as I add more watches and more comparisons to that. Right now, I'd say like the majority of the time, it did well. It's just that one scenario on that one run where like steady state, it was bobbling a bit, which is weird to me. Uh, hopefully though, that isn't like a, a bigger issue. But again, I just don't know at this point as to what the trigger for that was occurring. There was nothing unusual about that section of the run or any of those sections for that matter. So uh, that part's a little bit fuzzy to me. And thus concludes the accuracy section of this review. So that gets the final bit, which is, should you buy this over the Polar Verity Sense? And that's a tricky question. So this is 79 bucks uh, versus the Polar Verity Sense is 89 bucks, though often on sale for about 79 bucks. So price-wise, these are a wash. The Polar Verity Sense has a boatload of features on it. It's got a bunch of offloading features, so you can press the button there and go ahead and uh, record data to it. Uh, you can save the data afterwards. It connects up to other devices as well. So for example, uh, the Form Swim Goggles has a special mode for that. Uh, they've got an entire API or uh, software development kit as well for this sensor. Coros doesn't have any of that today. Instead, you pair it up to the app to activate it, but there's none of the downloading or functionality there. And of course, Polar has all this vast plethora of analysis tools and stuff like that in their app for the sensor that Coros doesn't have. Thus, for that difference in price, the theoretical difference of 10 bucks, that seems like I would choose the Polar every single time, but I'm also willing to look at Coros and go long-term. Coros has a very long history of adding a lot of features uh, to their watches after they release. On the flip side, on their pods, they have actually the exact opposite. They have no history of adding uh, any meaningful features to their pods after they release. So I don't know yet where this will fall. Will it fall in the accessories camp, which doesn't have such a good track record, or will it fall on the watch side, which has a great track record of features after the fact? Uh, and for that, 
only time will tell. Uh, still, to me, it feels like this has a lot of potential, but was maybe just pushed out of the oven a little bit too soon. Uh, speaking of which, it is only available in the US as of today, and then fall for the rest of the world. Again, I don't know why I just would have waited till the fall, added more features in there, and, and launched it then, but what do I know about sports tech? So with that, if you found this review interesting and useful, you know what to do, whack the like button at the bottom, hit the subscribe, all the things, plenty more spits. It's gonna be actually a good summer for sports tech stuff. Have a good one.